Good evening. It's Monday, August 17th, and tonight we will use the order for general devotion as the guideline and framework for our devotion. O oh Lord, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. You comfort and help us day by day. We trust your loving care. You are the King of heaven and earth. We give you praise and thanks. Alleluia. Lord Jesus, you invite us to pray and promise that we're two or three. Come together in your name. There you are with us. Answer our prayers and fulfill our desires according to your wisdom and love. Strengthen us in the knowledge of your truth and grant us life everlasting. Amen. Our reading is the continuation of John chapter 19 as we pick up in verse 31. We remember that in verse 30, Jesus had cried out, It is finished, and he had bowed his head and died. Since it was the preparation day, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the crosses over the Sabbath, because that Sabbath was a particularly important day. They asked Pilate to have the men's legs broken and the bodies taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man, who was crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other man. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. The one who saw it is testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he's telling the truth, so that you also may believe. Indeed, these things happen, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look at the one they pierced. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him remove Jesus' body. When Pilate gave him permission, he came and took Jesus' body away. Nicodemus, who earlier had come to Jesus at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 72 pounds. They took Jesus' body and bound it with linen strips, along with the spices, in accord with Jewish burial customs. There was a garden at the place where Jesus was crucified, and in the garden was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. So they laid Jesus there, because it was the Jewish preparation day, and the tomb was near. So as we look at this section of God's Word, what is maybe not as well known as, as um, we might think is the reason why the men's legs would have to be broken. Crucifixion was a grueling death, and it was one that uh, really what killed the men that were crucified was not the blood loss or the pain. It was usually suffocation. And that suffocation would be a result of the men becoming so weary of trying to hold themselves up <clears throat> to catch each breath that eventually all of those muscles in their legs and back would cramp and prevent them from raising back up to allow their diaphragm to expand to breathe. And, and so eventually they would suffocate. And so crucifixion usually did not end the day that a person was crucified. In fact, it was not uncommon for those on the cross to hang for a couple of days before they died, especially if they were strong. And the fact that Jesus was already dead was surprising. It was surprising to these soldiers because that just wasn't what they normally saw. And, but yet that goes back to the fact that Jesus laid down his life. No one was taking it from him. This was the purpose for which he came in the world, to die in order to save sinners. And now that work was complete. And so in keeping with the prophecies that not one bone of his would be broken, Jesus is dead before the soldiers come to break the legs and hasten the death of the other two men. And so they simply pierce his side and what flows out of his side is, is clear testimony of the fact that the man was dead as the bodily fluids had already begun to separate. And so there is no doubt that Jesus died. This is not something that the resurrection cannot be explained away by saying, well, he was just in a coma and he woke up and then walked out of the tomb. No, the, the fact that the fluids had begun to separate and change is an indication of death and the body cannot overcome that at all. He was dead. No life left at all. His spirit had departed from that body. And so Jesus died, truly died. And he did that to save you and me, to pay for all of our sins. And then by rising again on the third day on Easter Sunday, he proved that he had defeated sin, death, and the power of Satan, as well as the power of the grave so that all who believe know that not only are we forgiven and have our sins paid for by Christ, but we also have the sure hope of living for eternity 
in heaven. And then we see the two men, secret closet believers, if you will, stepping out and of their normal pattern of life and taking care of the body of Jesus when nobody else would step forward to do so. These men did that and showed their honor and, and their love for their Savior, even though up until this point it had been pretty much hidden and veiled. But now it's public testimony that these two men actually took down the body of Jesus and anointed it for burial and buried it um, in, the, in the short amount of time that they had before the Sabbath would begin. And in that they showed their honor for their Lord. And we pray. Actually, we continue with our general devotion in the words of the Apostles' Creed before we go into the prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord for all the people throughout the world, to strengthen believers and to enlighten unbelievers, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For peace and justice among nations, for honest leaders and good neighbors, for the gift of love, for steadfast faith and patient endurance, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer pain or sorrow, for the lonely and depressed, for the poor and needy, for those who love us and those who hate us, we pray. Lord, have mercy. Be gracious to us, defend us by your power, and bring us to glory everlasting. To you, O Lord, we entrust ourselves. Amen. And you have taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and preserve us. Amen.